Hi! The other day I was helping out a friend with some saving and loading in Godot and I figured I might as well make a video about it. So what I prepared here is a little scene, let's see. I have a checkbox in the corner that, well yeah, can be checked. I can change the background color and I can move these three things around. And I would like all of these things here to be saved and load it again when I boot up the application. Now currently it doesn't do that. Currently if I start it, everything is back to default, just as it looks in the editor. Now, how can we go about actually saving and loading stuff here? What I like to do is I like to create an auto load script. Let's just call it data manager, manager. And in the product settings, data, ah, oh, come on, just select it, easy add. Okay, so this data manager script can take care of everything for us. So let's see, we give it, we, we need a file name if we want to save something, so I'll just say save.data. The file ending doesn't really matter because this is just saved as binary data for Godot anyway, but you can be creative if you want something specific. And I'm going to be putting all the actual data into a dictionary. I'll just call it data. Now we'll need two functions here, load data path and save data path. I guess we can start with saving data because otherwise we have nothing to load. So we can open up a new file object and since we are writing we don't actually care if the file exists yet. So we can just say open the file in write mode, file name, file.write. Let's make sure it's opened in write mode so we don't care if it exists. We don't try to read it at all. Now file.store var and put data in there. Now that's our data variable from up here. So anything we put in here we can just store in there which makes dictionaries quite nice because we can put a whole lot of data in there in, without having a whole bunch of store calls. Of course, if you have separate levels and you want to store data for each one, it can be helpful to have multiple save files or something of the sort. That way you don't have to load up all levels at once, but can only load one at a time. But in that case, just do the same process multiple times. It's not really that different. So make sure to close the file again, because we don't want to leave that open when it's not being used. And that's basically saving already done. Now, loading. We open it in the same way, but we first want to check if the file exists. If the file, let's see, if file.file exists, user plus file name, then we can actually open it. If it doesn't exist, we have to go with some default data because there's nothing for us to do. So if this exists, we can say file.open file name. I should have probably made a file path variable, but whatever. Uh, we want to open this in read mode. File.read. And now data equals file.getVar. Close the file again, and that's it. This is all the loading, the entire variable we saved before gets loaded back into data, and we can actually call this in our ready function to make sure it's loaded as soon as the game launches. So go into ready, load data once, and we're good. Now what are we doing if the file doesn't exist? Well, it's probably going to exist by the end of a play session, but at the start we can just set some default values here. So what I can just do here is data equals 
let's say objects for the movable objects I'm using. That can also be a dictionary again. And settings for the other stuff, like the background color and the little checkbox. We can, we can do that in there. Yeah, that seems fine. Now what we can do, let's see. This here would technically save and load fine already. But of course we need to actually work on data. We need to actually change the data. So if we just go into the script for these ones, these three currently are sharing the same script because all the script is really doing is allowing them to be moved around. So what we can do, we go in here and here, this is the case where we are dropping something. So whenever one of the objects is dropped, we can say date, data manager. Yes, data manager dot data objects and our name. So we are, you, these do have individual names. So each of these objects, I can just use the name as a key in the objects dictionary and say, this is now equal to my global position. I'm using global position because it's safer. I don't want to mess anything up with local positions, but technically you can use that as well, of course. Now, in the ready function, I want to make sure to load my old position. So I can say if data manager dot data objects has my name. So if my name is somewhere in there, then my global position is equal to data manager dot data objects name. And that should pretty much work by default. One thing to be careful with, we are changing it, but we're currently not actually saving the change. So we can just say data manager .save data. The same thing could be achieved with a set get call inside of the data manager. But for now, I'm keeping it simple and calling save data manually. So let's give it a shot. We have everything here. Let's just move this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here. Does that work? It does. Everything loads in in the correct spot, just where I left it. Nice. Now we want to do the same thing essentially for the color and other settings. So we have a little thing here that just changes the color. So in that case, let's see, we can add a funk ready. If data manager dot data object, no, 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 we do, we're doing settings here. Settings dot has, um, let's, let's give this a name actually, background. dot has name and we can use that again since it has its own name now then let's see let's see color no no, no. We, we we actually have to use the set frame color command so set frame color to whatever the value in there is, data manager dot data settings name. Instead, we could turn this into an actual setting name by just saying this is called color now. It doesn't really matter, but since I gave it a background name, that also works. Loading properly, I think. So now we need to save data manager dot data settings name is equal to I guess we can just use the same one color picker dot color since that's the one we are using up here anyway oh actually the color is passed here I, I made a mistake there earlier that's not even needed so we can just do this 
easier. And then we save that. Data manager dot save data. We don't technically have to save every single time we change something. In a very big application that might become a little much. In that case you may want to save in specific intervals uh, on a timer or something. Or you could save in specific locations. You could save based on any number of conditions. I just don't have that many things here, so I'll just save whenever anything is changed immediately. Let's take a look. Make it red. Load it. And it's red. Nice. It's remembering all kinds of stuff now. Lastly, the checkbox. This doesn't actually have a script right now, it needs one. Let's see. Attach script. Yeah, sure, call it checkbox, I don't care. Now we already have ready here, so might as well. If data manager.data.has. And I'll just say. Uh, no, 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 not data, settings. Dot has. Box checked. In this case, I'm not giving this a name just to show the other way of doing it. So now we're just setting a custom parameter here. Then let's see, was this pressed? I think this pressed is the thing. Let's check it quick. Um, yes, it is. Okay, pressed is equal to data manager dot data and all of that. Now we actually want to re react to when this thing is being pressed. Um, no, no, no. Where is it? There's a checkbox. Here it is. And in this case, we can just say data manager dot data settings box checked. Uh, no. Is equal to pressed. Save it and see what happens. Now we have this. This is quite small here, so yeah, let's make it bigger. We can move this stuff around still. Close it, open it, and it's still checked. Everything works. Everything is being saved correctly now. Simple enough. Now you can adapt this to store any kind of data you can really imagine. Just plug it into your dictionary and good is. Pretty simple, I think. This will be all for today. Bye.